So I just added my lye water and my the temperatures are about 100 degrees and this is a seven and a half pound batch that we're going to be making today. And the design will need to remain pretty fluid. It's going to be a longer pour. It actually took me about 45 minutes to pour it. So I need to make sure that it doesn't get too thick on me. So I'm just going to blend it just till slightly past the emulsification. And the essential oils that I'm using today are orange, 15X, eucalyptus, and rosemary, and it smells amazing. Um, I have about four ounces of orange 10X, 0.75 ounces of eucalyptus, and 0.25 ounces of rosemary. And it smells like orange soda and Coca-Cola combined. I mean, it smells really fruity and fun. It's just my favorite essential oil blend right now. So I'm just going to just mix that in real quick. And then I'm gonna divide it into my colors. And for my colors, uh, I just used about a, two teaspoons of colorant to about one tablespoon of canola oil. And I mix that first um, so that it will, if you, it's gonna help keep my batter fluid a little bit longer than if I were to just add, let's say, just the powder. If it's already kind of a liquid colorant, it will just help it stay more fluid for what I need it to do. So I was going for kind of a stained glass look, um, something that you might see in a, a church or something. And I wanted the most of the colors to be uh, yellow because when I think of a stained glass, I, I see yellow, a little bit of red and orange and blue and some white. So that's kind of the design intention that I had. Whether I uh, achieve that or not, I don't know, but I still like the results. But I wanted most of my batter to be that those base colorants. And I find too that red and orange can easily overcome the white and the yellow and then it's too colorful uh, well in my opinion but so we're doing a basic column pour into a slab mold and that is a stainless steel bottle that I have filled with water to keep it weighted down so that the bottle doesn't come up with a soap. As I'm pouring, I'm trying to think of the colors that are going to be against each other. I was trying to not pour too many blues on yellows or yellows on blues because that would turn green. Now a few of them, or it could turn green, a few of them I did do it on purpose because I didn't mind a little bit of green. And in the final result, there is a little bit and that's just from the two colors mixing. And I was also careful not to try to do too much red and yellow right together because that might make an orange and I already had an orange. So I was trying to just bear in mind um, color mixes. Uh, oh yeah, and the red and the blue might make purple. So I was trying to vary it up and not always have the same pattern going because I just wanted a whole multitude of different colors, whether they mixed. I wanted some to mix and I didn't want others to mix. So there's really no right or wrong. Yeah, um, just do pour however you like. So now I'm just going to take my skewer and swipe from
from outward to inward, wiping it off with each swipe. Um, you could, again, it's always, I don't, sometimes like I want to, I don't know where to start or stop with the skewering. Sometimes I can overdo it and sometimes I don't do it enough. So it's just, you know, your artistic preference, I suppose. It's 18 hours later and I have unmolded my soap which did go through gel phase except for just on the corners so the corners are still a little squishy but I'm taking that slab and I'm cutting it into three columns as shown. Now each loaf I'm going to cut into six blocks and then I'm going to cut each of those six blocks horizontally um, to, so each of those blocks will result in two bars. Now I have the soap beveler, and, or also called a soap router, and I'm able to bevel my soaps, and it comes with all sorts of different edges, and so you can choose which edge you want. I have a favorite that I've come to like the best, which is the one I'm going to use today. So you just slide your little key in the slot, and then you secure it on the back so it doesn't wiggle around, and you get a nice consistent bevel. And then I just slide my soap on all four edges. I have to wash off the key or the, the the um, beveler every now and then just to keep it clean while I'm beveling and a huge shout out to Chas at Wild Plantanica who makes these and sells these uh, they're they're such a nice addition to like your soap creations they have such nice bevels
Thank you for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.